Brother Anthony Roberts, greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you've been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on, on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. A pleasant good morning, a pleasant good day to everyone in this island, in this great nation, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth on the World Wide Web. We greet you in the name of our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we open the word of God and tell you more of that one who has the power to save to the utmost, all who come unto God by him, shall we seek the Lord's face in prayer. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, hallowed be thy name. We approach thee this day in the name of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank thee for this opportunity thou hast afforded unto us to open thy word and to speak of that one who is ready, able, and willing to save. We thank thee, Father, for him. There is none like him. Thy word tells us there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So we pray for thy help today as we open thy word and speak of him. Thy name will be honored and glorified. Backsliders will be restored. The bowels of thy people will be refreshed. Those who are not saved be snatched as brands from the burning. We pray, Father, again for those who are not well, and pray that those heal according to thy mind and will, and the glory, honor, and praise will be thine. These things we ask with our thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, I would like us to turn, please, to the gospel according to Mark. Mark's gospel, chapter 5, and we shall begin at verse 1. Mark's gospel, chapter 5, we read from verse 1 on to verse 8. The gospel by Mark, chapter 5, and verse 1. The word of God says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gerasenes. And when he was come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could tame him. No man can bind him, no, not with chains. For he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. We trust and we know that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts and help us in declaring same for Christ's sake. Amen. Today, I would like us to consider as our subject, spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom. The passage from which we have read is well known to many, many people. But as we look at this chapter, as we look at these verses, there are many truths that are in this chapter. And we shall just consider a few among the many that would have been declared from this chapter already. The first thing we shall consider this day is the man's plight. The man's plight. 
his state, his condition, his situation is revealed in the word of God from which we have read his plight. Notice when we consider the man's plight, the man's plight tells us that he was controlled. He was controlled. He was regulated. He was dominated. When one considers the control of which we have spoken, we shall let you know that this control, firstly, the man was controlled by Satan. He was under the rule and he was under the government of Satan. The man was demon possessed. We want to say to everyone who is viewing this broadcast, moments with truth, if you are not saved by the grace of God, you are under control and the one who controls you is not God. It is the devil who is controlling every person who is not saved by the grace of God. In order for God to control you, you need to be born again. You need to be saved by the wonderful grace of God. So here is this man. The Bible tells us he was controlled. The man was dominated. The man was ruled by the devil under the control of Satan. You know, sometimes we sing, one of the hymns that we sing is, Under the burden of guilt and care, many a spirit is grieving, who in the joy of the Lord might share life everlasting receiving. Life, life, eternal life, Jesus alone is the giver. Life, life, abundant life, glory to Jesus forever. And so the man was controlled by Satan. Not only was he controlled by Satan, he was controlled by sin. Sin was controlling that man. He was helpless. Those who are not saved by the grace of God are controlled by Satan and controlled by sin. Friends, not saved by the grace of God. This is why the gospel is preached in this island. This is why the gospel is preached in this great nation. That men and women, boys and girls may know that there is a way back unto God from the dark paths of sin. Jesus said in John's gospel chapter 14, I am the way, the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me the man was controlled controlled by satan controlled by sin the man's plight not only does god want us to observe the man being under control he was controlled but notice the consequence you see when satan is controlling when sin is controlling, there is always a consequence or there are consequences that follow. What are these consequences? Notice the word of God tells us that this man, he was fierce. The man was fierce. How do you know that the man was fierce? The word of God tells us that everything that was put on the man, he broke them asunder. Fetters were put, chains were put, and each of them was broken. The man tore them apart as if he were tied with a piece of thread. The man was fierce. When one listens, when one looks at what is taking place in our island, in our nation, it reveals not only the state, and many people are under control by the devil, but God is saying the consequences and some of the consequences, one of the consequences is man has become fierce. Man is aggressive. Man exhibits, man exhibits that kind of hatred. One sees it in our villages. 
One sees it in our schools. One sees it and hears it on the job. One sees it in our nation. Man has become fierce, aggressive. These aggressions tell us that men and women, boys and girls who are not saved are under the control of Satan and sin. The consequence is, one of the consequences is man is fierce. This man was fierce. He was aggressive. Not only was the man aggressive, the man was violent and there is violence and many do not know what to do where to turn but you see everything else we speak about everything else except the lord jesus christ we have thrown the bibles out we have thrown sunday schools out and many spiritual things are put out and because we have turned our backs upon god we embrace sin we embrace embrace iniquity that is why we are seeing hearing and reading the things that are taking place in this great nation friends we want to tell you that because men and women boys and girls are fierce these things tell us that they are under the control of satan but today we are here to tell you that a greater than Satan is here. His marvelous name is Jesus and he has the power to set you free. The problem in our nation is spiritual. And because it is spiritual, there is only one who has the power to save and to help. And his lovely name is Jesus. The one, one of the consequences was the man was fierce. The man was aggressive. The man was violent. And we have violence on every hand and side in our society today, which is very shameful. Not only was the man fierce, another consequence is the man was feared. There were those who are afraid of the man. And there are so many people today. There are others who are afraid of what is happening in our country, happening in the world today. When there are those who will whip a knife and destroy the lives, take the lives of many whip a, revol a revolver and take the lives of so many there are those who are afraid and fear is gripping this nation but we want the nation to know and we want everybody in this great nation to know that jesus christ has the power to save jesus wants to save you jesus wants you to repent you've got to repent or perish turn or burn it is heaven or hell God wants to save you and save you now. These people, many of them were afraid. Notice not only was the man fierce, not only was not only were people afraid, not only was it did it cause fear, but I want you to notice that the man was frantic in verse 2 and the other verses. These verses tell us verses 4 and 5 that the man he was in grief the man was uncontrollable you could not control him there were those who came and they meant well they used fetters they used chains and they used many means to tame the man and every effort of man failed and we want everyone to know that people are trying and they mean good they mean well they have tried and they are trying and these things that they are trying have failed and will continue to fail because the problem is not physical the problem is spiritual man needs deliverance spiritual deliverance and friends this day we want to tell you that although the man was frantic the Lord Jesus Christ had the power to save that man. And so we see the word of God tells us not only was the man fierce, not only did it cause fear, not only did he cause fear, not only was he frantic, but we want to tell you today that the man was favored. He was loved. By whom was he loved? He was loved by the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you know? that the lord loved him the lord loved him because jesus christ knew the condition in which the man was 
and he left where he was and came to Gadara because he loved that man. Friends this morning, friends today, viewing this broadcast moments with truth, maybe you are fierce, maybe you have caused fear in the family, maybe you have caused fear in your villages, maybe you have caused fear where you are, but we want you to observe there are people in this nation that whatever the condition, whatever the circumstances, the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world. Jesus Christ, God does not love sin. He hates sin, but he loves the sinner. Friends, as we speak to you today, you might be causing fear. You might be fierce, and dear friends, you also might be fearful because of what is taking place in our nation. We are here to tell you, God loves you with an everlasting love, and he wants to save you. The Bible tells us, but God commendeth his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The man's plight, he was controlled, and he was uncontrollable. People could not control him. Education is good. Thank God for education. Religion is good. Thank God for religion. But education, religion, good works cannot tame the sinner. The sinner needs to be saved. The sinner needs to repent. The sinner needs to get back and turn to God in repentance. We would to God as you listen to this broadcast and you listen to the gospel again this day, you're going to recognize that men and women, boys and girls, need a spiritual, spiritual deliverance, spiritual freedom. And this freedom comes when the sinner realizes his condition, recognizing that Jesus Christ has the power to save. He bows before God, repents of his sin, and flees from the wrath which is to come. The man's plight, he was under the control of the devil. Not only does God want us to know the consequences, God also wants us to know, look at the man's crying. The man was crying. The man was hurt. The man took stones and he was hurting himself. And there are many people in this country who are crying. They are crying because they are hurt. Not only physical hurt, emotional hurt, but there is spiritual hurt. Dear friends, listen to this broadcast. Moments with truth. Sin hurts. Sin brings hurt. You have been hurt by sin. And you would always be hurt by sin unless and until you repent and turn away from that path on which you are traveling and get right with God by trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The man was crying. He cried because he was hurt. The man cried because he needed help. Help. Dear friends, we want to tell you that you need help. You do not need physical help because the condition is spiritual. You need spiritual help. And that is why Jesus Christ came into this world. He lived a perfect life. And then he went to the place called Calvary, laid that life down. The Bible tells us Christ the just died for us the unjust that he might bring us to God. Having died and was buried, he is risen from the dead. He is seated at the Father's right hand and he has the power to deliver us, to set us free spiritually. There is only one deliverer. There is only one savior for sin and for sinners. And he is the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you bow your heads, bow your hearts, and receive Jesus Christ as your savior. The man was crying because he was hurt. The man was crying because he needed help. Oh, the songwriter asks this question. Is there anyone can help us? One who understands our needs. And then the songwriter went on to say, yes, there is one. There's only one. The blessed, blessed Jesus, he is the one. Friends, this morning, today we are telling you, as you ask that momentous question, is there anyone can help? Yes, we say with joy, there is one, the only one, and his name is Jesus, God manifest in flesh. He is ready and able 
to save you from sin. The man cried because he was hurt. The man cried because he needed help. The man cried because he was held. He could not release himself. The man cried because he was helpless. The man cried because he needed help. And friends today not saved by the grace of God, you need help. You are held by sin. You are held by the devil. You are not free. Freedom comes when a man repents of his sin and trusts Jesus Christ as Savior. The man cried because he thought there was no hope. Friends, this morning we thank God. Maybe you are crying in your awful condition. Maybe you are crying because of what sin has done what sin is doing and you are crying because you are asking yourself the question is there any hope we thank god this morning we thank god today there is hope jesus christ is the hope he is the one who gives us hope but he wants you to be saved he wants to save you he wants you to repent of your sin and seek the lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near that man he was crying the man cried the plight of the man but we want you to observe secondly the presence of the lord the lord's presence the bible tells us jesus christ came into gadara into the country of the gatherings the presence of god was there and friends in our awful condition while we were yet without strength god came into this world god became man the bible tells us in john's gospel chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word was made flesh and tabernacle among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth the presence of the lord the lord's presence he came into gadara god came into this world and he lived perfectly everyone else was controlled by the devil jesus christ is god he lived perfectly raised the dead cleansed the leper and did so many wonderful things and in order for us to be released spiritually he went to the place called calvary oh the songwriter asked the question was it for me for me alone the savior left his glorious throne the dazzling splendors of the sky was it for me he came to die the songwriter says yes it was for me yes all for me oh love of god so great so free oh one just love i'll shout and sing he died for me my lord and king he came he lived he died because he loves every person in this great nation he came he lived he died because he loves everyone in this world jesus christ is highly exalted at the father's right hand and the apostle peter said neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved the man was there and jesus came into this world and he died for our sin but notice thirdly the lord's power the lord said come out of that man the lord's power was real the lord's power was realized the lord's power brought rejoicing the man was set free the man experienced peace with god because he was now at the feet of jesus listening to him learning from him and he went about and told men what great things the lord has done for him and how he has had compassion on him what will you do this morning what will you do today even if you are fierce even if you are not fierce we are here to tell you that jesus christ is mighty to save will you open your hearts will you trust him as your savior we are going to bow our heads we are going to bow our heads before god we are going to close our eyes and while we are praying we say come sinner come god give you the grace god give you the courage to bow with us 
and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we come to thee at the close of another broadcast, Moments with Truth. And O oh God, we thank thee for thy Son. There is wonder-working power in the blood. Although that man was uncontrollable, we thank thee that what man could not have done, the Lord Jesus Christ did, O oh God, in this nation. And there are so many who are crying. There are so many who are fearful because of what is taking place. But we thank thee that the same God who released that man and released us has the power to save the young, the middle-aged, and the old. Oh God, do a work in this nation and a work in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, by them bowing to thee and trusting thee as their Savior. Bless thy word. Save precious souls, the honor, the glory, the praise will be thine as we give thee our thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Holy Savior, sanctified forever, beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of love, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love.